It's actually really noticeable if a student clearly doesn't understand that literary device because either it's just listed there without any analysis or it's actually analyzed incorrectly by the student. Literary devices are elements used by an author to add meaning to their text. The most common literary devices include symbolism, foreshadowing, and characterization, but there are plenty others. I've got an extensive list of meta-language terms you can learn over on my blog, which I'll just link above there for you. Check it out, download it, save it for yourself so that you can up-level your essays in the future. To discuss literary devices, I'm going to break this video up into the three main areas of study for VC English. Text response, analyzing argument, and comparative. Lego. So let's consider how you'd actually use literary devices in your text response essays. Here you'll be discussing how the author uses literary devices to heighten the meaning within the text. This involves identifying a literary device in the text and then analyzing why you believe the author has chosen to include this literary device. For instance, you might ask yourself, what does the literary device suggest about the characters, themes, or plot of the text? What does the inclusion of this literary device imply about the author's views and values? Does the author want you to feel a certain way about the use of this literary device, or does it heighten the emotion felt by the audience? Take a sentence of an A-plus essay from a rear window study guide as an example. In tandem with this, Hitchcock also utilizes mise-en-scene or the composition of a frame to add to the suspense of rear window. You can see here that the writer of this essay is analyzing how Hitchcock's use of mise-en-scene intends to create the feeling of suspense within the viewer. Let's now consider how literary devices can be used in the analyzing argument area of study. Things are a little bit different here because instead of using devices to heighten the meaning of a text like in text response, literary devices are actually used as a persuasive tool in analyzing argument text. That's why we also call them persuasive techniques. Whether you're looking at an article, opinion piece, speech, or another text type, one thing that all analyzing argument pieces have in common is that they are designed to convince the reader of the writer's stance. This means that when discussing literary devices, which might include include things like connotations, attacks, and tone, you should link it back to the intended effect of these techniques. You might wonder, what is the writer trying to convey to the reader? How does the use of this device contribute to the writer's argument? What is the persuasive technique likely to encourage the reader to think, feel, or do? For instance, let's look at this sentence from our How to Write a Killer Language Analysis Study Guide. While discussing the problems of using online lingo in daily conversation, Pearson uses generalizations such as numerous, daily use, and always in an attempt to give an overall impression of the omnipresence of the internet in everyday life. Here, the student is analyzing the impression that Pearson, the writer of the article, is attempting to convey to the reader through the use of generalizations. Now, comparative essays. Because comparative essays is very much similar to how you would do text response, discussing literary devices is is very much in the same way as you would for text response. However, the key difference is that because comparative essays place an emphasis on comparing two texts, unlike text response, this means that you can compare the use of literary devices within the text pair. You might ask yourself, what is similar and different about how the two texts use literary devices? How does the purpose of literary devices compare between the texts? To illustrate what this looks like in practice, let's consider an example from our LSG's Ransom and the Queen comparative study guide. Both Ransom and the Queen utilize the symbolic power of clothing to depict the shift from tradition to relatively progressive events. In this sentence, the writer identifies a similarity between how the two texts use the literary device of clothing and then links this back to the theme of tradition and change. Now, a few tips to help you strengthen your use of literary devices. Rather than just name dropping your literary devices, make sure you actually analyze them too. Identifying literary devices should form part of your discussion rather than simply listing them without much analysis. Let's take another look at our How to Write a Killer Language Analysis Study Guide to see what embedding literary devices within strong analyses looks like. Walker lists the sustainable initiatives she has introduced to the school and distinguishes Spire as the only local school taking such measures. Combined with her enthusiastic use of exclamation marks, Walker invites parents to feel optimistic and proud of the primary school. By opening with such positivity, Walker hopes to make parents more receptive to the new initiatives she goes on to propose. The literary devices or persuasive techniques in this example include listing, enthusiastic tone, and positive connotations. 
Rather than just mentioning these, however, the writer includes analysis of the purpose behind Walker's inclusion of these techniques and also integrates evidence through quotes to substantiate their point. Next is take time to understand different literary devices before you actually write them in your essays. This will actually ensure that you understand these literary devices well and can confidently write about them in your essay. It's actually really noticeable if a student clearly doesn't understand that literary device because either it's just listed there without any analysis or it's actually analyzed incorrectly by the student. So a tip here when you have doubts about how to discuss a literary device is to connect it back to the author. The key thing to remember is that literary devices are always included for a reason and analyzing this in your writing is a great way to demonstrate that you can identify the author's intention behind this decision. So to see this in practice, let's look at another example from our Weird Window Study Guide. Ultimately, the suspense built up throughout Rear Window culminates in the pinnacle of its mystery plot, in which Hitchcock utilizes lighting and cross-cutting techniques to deliver a finale as unnerving as the very murder in question. You can see that in this example, the writer links the film techniques of lighting and cross-cutting back to Hitchcock and considers why the director employs these techniques. If you want to make a head start on understanding literary devices, then you might find my video on meta language helpful. It unpacks more about how you can identify meta language and gives you lots of different examples of meta language you can use in your writing. If you'd like to hear more about literary devices, then let me know what you'd like to see in a comment below. That way, I get to know what you would like me to talk more about in my future videos. I'll see you guys then. Bye!